guys and welcome to Real Food. I just got out of the movie theater seeing Dune 2. It was long. It was very long, but it was good. Here are a few thoughts. Should I just go into my thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Should I go into spoilers right away? Okay, can I say anything without spoilers? Um, hmm, Not really. I think I have to go into spoilers right away. What can I say in a general way? I uh, wish there was more of Christopher Walken. He's great. But there's not a lot of him. Um, <laughs> what can we say? I don't like Paul's actions. I don't like them. Obviously, he loses himself and as a result, loses Zendaya. And I don't like that because I like their love story. Also, it seems like he's getting a little bit extreme. And so now, of course, they find themselves going into this holy war, which definitely means there's going to be a Dune 3. So everyone, who knows how long that one's going to be? Buckle up for that. Uh, also, I don't trust his mom anymore. Lady Jessica? No. You're half Hart Conan, half Benny Jesuit? No, I don't trust you. What are you doing? You created this whole scene and you're just walking your son right into it. So that doesn't feel very good. I'm also confused about a couple of things. So um, basically the whole like first half of the movie is, okay, I'm not confused about this. Sorry. <laughs> So basically, the, I was I was like in love with the whole first half of the movie because it is all just like Paul le learning the Fremen ways. And of course, him riding a worm is the best. Anytime they ride worms in this, it's the best. Um, so the first half was good because I liked that storyline. And then it just all goes to shit. Um, but what am I confused about? OK, a couple of things. OK, I'm sorry. I'm jumping all over the place because I'm just thinking of things I want to say. I will say I did really like the pacing of this. Like there were things that they set up but then didn't show because you don't need to. Like, for example, when he's like learning the Fremen ways and they're like, OK, we're going to like see if you can like survive in the desert and they give him a tent. But you don't actually see him do it because you don't need to. But he's alive. So you assume that he does. Or there's a couple other things like that. Oh, yeah. Where they like say that they're going to attack like it's like the spice where they keep all the spice what's it called spice depot <laughs> spice depot and then all of a sudden it's just like exploding so like it, it they have good pacing that way and then there are some things that they'll just like take forever on like when they go to the Harkonnen planet and do like oh, that epic battle in the um, triangle coliseum <laughs> it's really scary and they take their time with it so I thought like they did that really well. Okay, the Harkonnen planet was disgusting. I hated it. It was black and white, a terrifying imagery, yet captivating. I hated it, but you just couldn't stop watching. It was disgusting. I hate Triangle Coliseum. That the the the, the what is it? The nephew guy with no eyebrows ew it's disgusting you're so gross and then all these like clicker monster guys in the coliseum thing too were disgusting what is that what was that on their head it's so gross anyways i hated being on that planet i hated it i hated flying fat guy even more this time the baron what i learned that's his name what he just has to fly around with this ball and chain thing now because he was poisoned before is that what's happening because before he was just flying around freely like and now all of a sudden he's got this ball and chain thing going around which was making me laugh too um here are the things i'm confused about josh brolin is that his name josh brolin and his real name is gurney gurney <laughs> his name is gurney is he a, being a trickster and i don't really know what was happening there because then he brought them like to that atomic site and then and then what blew up i didn't understand what was blowing up do we think that gurney is up to something confused also about like what are they really saying here in terms of like prophecy versus just like what just by like if you don't learn from the past then you're doomed to kind of like repeat the future and that's why older generations are constantly trying to control the younger generations because they just want things to like continue as they are or stay in power but then i was like so is there really not a prophecy and it's all just like things become self-fulfilling prophecies because if enough people have faith in it then that's what happens but then i got so confused when zendaya took the water of life and put it on paul's lips and then he did wake up is that just a coincidence there's too much going on so i was like i don't think a prof these prophecies are real but then also there are some things that make trick you into maybe thinking that they're real i guess that's the whole point it can't be obvious one way or the other but there's a lot of tricky things going on there's a lot of tricky people Obviously, I take Zendaya's side in this one. It's like, everyone, listen to Zendaya. Chani. Also, baby worm. Did I predict this? I had a prophecy. I had a premonition. I had a vision of a baby worm, and you got to see it, but then it got strangled underwater. <laughs> uh, my three favorite moments. Okay. 
my three favorite moments when the Harkonnen, no, my three favorite moments when the Fremen people are underground and then they emerge from the underground. That is so badass. They got their little scuba breathing tubes from under the sand, but then they just burst out of the sand. They do that a couple of times. Number two, when the Fremen people are riding worms. Beginning, middle, and end, they do this. Ride and worms, side by side, ride and worms. Yes, at the end, is a combination, both worlds. Paul, Maidib, what's his name? Paul Atreides, Usul, Maidib. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa El Gadib. <laughs> so his fucking name, I can't stand these names. Paul. But he, Paul, just gonna call him Paul, it blends in both worlds. The worm world from the, from the, from the Fremen people. And the Arsenal world from the Atreides people. I don't like him becoming more like his dad. He goes a little bit off the rails at the end, which I don't like. Yeah, I know. He's playing the game, but I don't like that he's playing the game. She's got the right idea. Don't even play the game, Paul. What are you doing? You're playing the game. Favorite moment number three? I hated it, but I loved it. Triangle Coliseum made me so scared. I hated that whole part when they're on the Arconan planet. No eyebrows. Those weird anchor head guys clicking in the ring disgusting anyways this one like i said did feel a little bit longer overall but i still really enjoyed it good performances wish we got more christopher walken but hey i'll take what i can get <sighs> i'm glad that the baron died i'm sad that paul has lost his way and i do not trust his mom and screw that old bene Gesserit lady yeah you yell at her paul but no i don't like him i am conflicted <laughs> so are prophecies real probably not but can you make them come real if you believe in them enough? Yeah. Dreams do come true. <laughs> Is that the lesson? <laughs> Just believe in yourself and anything's possible. Now there's a holy war. Look what he's done. <laughs> okay. I won't go off the rails with my rating. Four and a half. Oh my god. <laughs> Why do I struggle to say this? Okay. I give this movie another four and a half out of five on Letterboxd. Four and a half more Adibs. Four and a half Paul Atreides Usul Mwadibs out of five.